In this lecture, I'll continue on from the previous lecture where we built a quad, and this time we'll use the quad code to build a cube. So six quads make a cube, and by positioning them with different orientations, we create the whole cube. But the clever thing in this is that we don't do any rotations as such. We just use the different vertices of a cube and change the normals of those vertices to point in different directions, which gives us an orientation of our quad. So let's have a look at the code. So we'll go back into our create quads code that we previously made. And the biggest change in this, I'll show you. And that's the part where we build each of the six different quads. So the first thing you'll find that's different right at the top here is I've got an enum called cube side. This will set up whether it's the bottom cube, the top cube, the left, right, front, or back. So it includes all of the six possible orientations of the cube. And by sending one of those through to our create quad function, it will then construct the correct one. So we don't create a whole cube in one go. We're still creating it out of quads because later on when we move to more complex Minecraft-like worlds, remember we're not building cubes. We're building quads and we're adding them together as needed. Now, just down further in here, we've already got all this code from before. We already put in all the possible vertices. And the difference is down in here where I've got a switch statement, which will switch around the particular side that we're giving this function. So if it's, for example, the bottom side, it will construct the quad using this code here. And you can see that it's taking in the cube side dot bottom as the match for the switch statement. It's then going to use vertices 0, 1, 2, and 3. The normals for this are going to be the down. So in the previous one, we used the front normals for that particular side. But for the bottom, the normals will be facing down because they're coming straight out at 90 degrees from the vertices and the plane for that particular quad. So it makes sense for them to go down. In this case, we set up our UVs like this, which will be exactly the same as all the other sides which will stretch that single dirt texture across the whole quad. Later on, we'll get to manipulating these UVs so that we can add different textures. But for now, we're just going to stick with the dirt. And then we pick out which triangles we're going to use from our um, list of vertices. Okay, and then for all of the others, you do it for the top, for the left, for the right, for the front, and the back. And then you end the switch statement down here before you go back into the code we had before, which was setting up the vertices, the normals, the UVs back into our mesh filter, recalculating the bounds, calling it a quad, because it still is a quad, we're just creating six of them and adding on the material finally down here. So that's all the same. The only difference is the enum at the top and that switch statement there. Now, down in the rest of the program, instead of creating a quad in the start function down here, I've written another function called create cube, which you can put above the start function. And it creates a quad for each of the six sides, as you can see there. So we just send through which one we want in this case, which will build up an entire cube. So save that and switch back into Unity. This code will already be attached to your cube in the hierarchy that we created before, and you should still have the material for the dirt added to it. So let's press play and it will build our six quads, which give us something that looks like a cube. But it's not a cube, because if you select any of these quads and move them, you will see that they are just single quads. They're not combined into the one mesh. Now, having single quads in your world is no better than having single cubes, and so you're going to end up having an awful lot of batches in the end. What we need to do to help Unity do its job is combine as many meshes together 
as we can in order to help and facilitate the optimization of our game world. And combining them together, ultimately, we're going to end up with what you may know as a chunk in Minecraft. And that's a mesh that's a sort of a set size for part of your world. And it's these chunks that we end up putting together like Lego blocks to create our entire world. So first of all, let's just start by combining our cube. So go back into your create quads. And what I'm going to do is add underneath our previous function, which is create quad, we're going to add a new one called combine quads. And what this will do is to grab all of the children meshes that we've just created all of those single quads that are attached to our cube parent and put them into the one mesh. So the first step here is to combine all the children meshes. First, we grab hold of all of the children meshes in an array of mesh filters using the get components in children mesh filter. And that will grab all of those quads that we've just created. We then make something called a combine instance, an array of those, which we'll call combine. And into that array, we need to copy each of our mesh filters meshes so that we can then perform a combine on them later on. Now inside of this combine instance here, you can see inside of this while loop that we're looping around all of the children meshes and putting them into this combine uh, mesh. And the meshes also have a transform. When we created them before, and when we create all of our chords, we use the exact same set of local vertices data. So they're all based around a 0, 0, 0 point where the vertices are going to be at 0 0.5 or negative 0.5 values. And you've got to transform those from that local space into the world space and where they will be in the world. And we do that here with a local to world matrix transformation that we add to this transform of the combined instances. So once this array is all filled up with our children meshes and their world coordinates, we then combine them. Now, you can't just combine them and leave them hanging there. They've got to be combined into a new mesh, and that new mesh needs to live somewhere. So we're going to create a new mesh filter, which I've called MF just here quickly, and we're adding that to the current game object, which is our empty cube parent holding all of those quads. So it's now going to become a visible object with its own mesh filter. So we then create a new mesh for it, which will currently be empty. But in the next step, we set its mesh to be the combined meshes of the combine array, which was the one we filled up here with all of those children quads. So let's save that and go back to Unity and have a little look what we get. So I press play and you can see here that I have a cube. And if I click on the cube and look in the inspector, you can see that that new cube mesh has been added. But the child cubes still live underneath. And if I grab hold of one of them and move it, you can't see this cube. And even if I was to select all of them and turn it off, I still can't see this cube, even though it has this mesh filter on it. So whenever you have a mesh filter, you also need to have a mesh renderer. So we'll go back into our code this time and we'll add in that renderer. And at the same time, we will delete all of these quads because once you've created your top level cube mesh, we don't need these children anymore because they'll just be taking up processing and you just don't want them hanging around. So back in the code, still in the combine quads function, after the combine of the meshes, we're going to add in this code here. So we're now going to create a mesh renderer for our cube object, which means we need to add the mesh renderer to it because it doesn't have one, and then set the material. This is the same material we were using before for each quad. We're using that cube material. Now, 
the UVs that you place on each triangle within the whole cube are going to take care of all of the different parts of the material that you want to map on later on. At the moment, we're just using the entire material, but we'll start breaking it down a little bit later. But when you put those meshes together, it doesn't disrupt the UVs, which is really nice and makes our job really easy. So we just dump one material on the whole thing and it just picks up the bits that it needs. So after you've done that, then go through, we just got a little for loop here that will go through all of the transforms that are attached to the object, which are the children quads in this case, and then just destroy them all for us. So let's just save that and we'll go back into Unity and press play. And what we'll get is our cube and you can see it there. The quads are now gone. And if we move the cube, you can see that it's an entire object. So on our cube in our hierarchy, you can check out all of the things that we added. So we added a mesh filter and we added our mesh renderer and our material, which is down the bottom here is also um, still there and set for the mesh renderer as its single material that it has. So that's how you combine a mesh and we'll be using that a lot as we start to build up our world. In the next lecture, we'll look at changing the materials on individual parts of our quads and hence cubes.